Welcome to Next Level Tech. One of the major perks of riding a motorcycle is circumventing traffic and reaching blistering speeds while saving on gas. More and more, people each year are buying motorbikes. In the last century, quite a few interesting and oftentimes weird bikes have come into existence. In this video, we'll talk about some weird motorcycles that actually exist. You might be surprised how varied the design of motorcycles has been. If you don't want to miss a video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to get notified every time we post new videos. Let's get started. Rokon Trailbreaker The Rokon Trailbreaker was invented in the 1950s by Charlie Fing, and it was first known as the Motor Tractor. That name finally represents the Trailbreaker's intentions. It was meant to be a utility vehicle for farmers, hunters, or those working in far-flung areas where a small vehicle needs to get you there and back without drama every time. The Trailbreaker has giant tires, along with racks that could carry enough to move a family of four across town. For its two-wheel drive system, a shaft in the frame's top tubes routes power through to the front fork where a chain takes over. This svelte 200-pound machine is designed to be as bare bones as possible while maximizing off-road capability on two wheels. The hollow aluminum wheels are sealed and can be used to hold extra water or fuel on your next epic adventure. Uno Die Cycle Something like a motorized unicycle or a one-wheeled motorcycle, the DiCycle or UNO, is a quick but eco-friendly way to get from A to B. Ben Gulak, a 17-year-old guy, created the device after a trip to China, where he was disgusted by the high levels of smog pollution caused by small motor vehicles. Ben drew up a plan for an all-electric unicycle that would emit no fumes, and he figured it's easier to weave through crowded streets than a standard two-wheeler. He decided to put the wheels side by side, just an inch apart and directly under the rider to give the ride more stability. The rider accelerates by leaning forward, as he would on a Segway. When the rider leans into a turn, the inside wheel lifts and the outside wheel lowers, so both stay firmly on the ground. The Uno's Two wheelchair motors should theoretically give it a top speed of 40 miles per hour, but for safety's sake, Gulak didn't take it above 15 miles per hour. The Motocampo was Honda's answer for the ultimate urban motorcycle. It was tiny, for one thing and neatly packed up so that it could stow away in a Honda City, a small car which still has a version in production. While the Honda City sold well, the Motocampo didn't. As such, production on it stopped in the 1980s. The Majestic Georges Roy was responsible for the design of the Majestic, regarded as the ultimate French Art Deco motorcycle.
This motorbike goes all the way back to 1929. It might be worth a lot of money these days. Roy was among the first industrial designers to grapple with mass production techniques for auto manufacturing, in which huge presses stamp out bodywork by the tens of thousands, very cheaply. Conventional motorcycle production with the bicycle-derived tube frame is labor-intensive and expensive, and Roy correctly understood that inexpensive pressings could form the chassis of a motorcycle, including the frame, forks, and tanks. Quasar a more modern interpretation of the Neurocar theme was the Quasar, designed by the late Malcolm Newell, built in England from 1976 to 1994. Powered by a 750cc four-cylinder Reliant automobile engine and equipped with a four-speed gearbox and full roof fiberglass body, Quasar offered some degree of weather protection and excellent aerodynamics. Similar design approaches are found in the Swiss Ecomobile and British-built Voyager. Night Shadows Maiden Night Shadows Maiden was a two-wheeled beast which was created as a tribute to the legendary car company Jaguar. Designed by the artist Berend Hemis and built by Mazo Design, the Night Shadow bike is a 1200cc one-off base of the Jaguar's famous sleeper bonnet mascot and 17-inch rims and Jaguar mouth headlight. The frame of the bike is made of 4130 stainless steel and finished in high-gloss ebony lacquer. Berend made the bike as a high-speed and high-tech vehicle. Berend's creation looks really gorgeous, even after going deep into electronics, power units, etc. Everyone seeing this Jaguar bike on the road will gaze at it for a long time. Emma. Perhaps German engineering and efficiency were never put on display more effectively than in the Emma, built from 1948 to 1951. With advanced features like a single-sided front fork and single-side rear swing arm and cantilever rear suspension, features that would not find their way into the designs of other brands until many years later. The ultralight Emmy was way ahead of its time. With the engine, driveline, and rear end of the bike built as one unit, the single side swing arm also functioned as the exhaust system. A tiny 98cc two-stroke engine powered the early models, with the twin-cylinder 148cc engine being fitted on the later models. Bomberland. In stark contrast to the wispy Emmy design, the Czech Bomberland, built from 1925 to 1939, was built with heavy duty, hard use in mind. The massive steel double cradle frame housed a 598cc single cylinder OHV Leibisch four stroke engine, and the frame's top rails extended all the way back past the rear wheel. Twin fuel tanks were mounted at the rear of the frame and aluminum disc wheels were used to save weight on the very long wheelbase machines. Some models were designed to seat three passengers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Which one from the list did you like the most? Let us know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. See you in the next video.